Must have some pretty good chips that they don't fry with my image. Yours, mine. Like, yeah, no. Unless the camera doesn't break. <laughs> right? All right, you're all set. We're all set. Yep. All right. Public communications, Deb. Do we have any? Uh, no. No. All right. Approval of the minutes of June 22nd, our last meeting. Make a motion. motion. The minutes of June 22nd. Sorry, we're a second. second. I have a couple of questions, just clarification things. Okay. Um, on the Rogers Road, it says soil report noted that there is an old gravel drive that serviced the house. What house are they talking about? So there, there's the house next to, there's an existing house out there next to the vacant lot that we oh, have. Oh, the one, okay. Yeah, yeah that's the. And on uh, Fishtown Road, the extension of the uh, water main? River Road. River Road. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, it, we're talking about a light envelope. What does that mean? Where, where are you seeing this? Uh -oh. okay. I don't know. I have, I have, <laughs> Sorry, I, I, have, I have the minutes in front of me. So that one is the River Road? Yeah. Might be fish. Is there a fish town road one? Yeah, there's, there's a fish town the fish road, town road, road we didn't talk one. about because it was the fish town road okay, one on. has a light envelope. Tight, 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 mm. tight, and tight. So, in other words, a zoning. Oh, zoning. Tight. I misread it. There we go. Oh. Tight. What, what do they mean, tight envelope? Just that, that the zoning setbacks make it very, oh, very, very oh, small oh, area. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and on uh, modifications for that, uh, there's a sentence, inspection before and work begins. I think and should be the, or drop it entirely. So, so number one. one. Yes, I see, yep, get rid of and. Yeah. Yep. And then another clarification, I'd, um, the water main extension, this area rains under River Road. What are they talking about? Under the Via this area rains under River Road via an existing drain, RC I'm sure it's drain. drain. What drain with a D? I misread it again. Uh, that or there's a typo because I can't find it. Oh. <laughs> it's, I don't think it's in those minutes. I don't think so either. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> no, I think it must be the previous minutes you're thinking about. Because there's we didn't, we didn't talk about River Road last River. time. Yeah. Oh, maybe that's what I read. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, so it's drains. That makes more sense. Yep. Thank you. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as amended. I have a second. 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 All right, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right. Uh, we have a special meeting on July 5th. That was our site walk? Yeah, that was the site walk. Mm -hmm. yeah. Motion to approve the minutes of July 5th. Second it. Comments? No. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Extensions? None. So, no new application? That's correct. No new applications. River Road water main extension, huh? All right. I see Ken Petrini is here. So, I'm going to promote him up here. Ken, I am um, promoting you to a panelist so you can share your screen and you should be able to communicate with us. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> At the very least, I can get his plan out. Oh, there, there he is. is. I'm here. <laughs> Good evening. So do you want to share your screen, Ken, or do you want me to lay out the plan? If you wouldn't mind laying out the plan, that would be great. All right. I'm just gonna move this <laughs> there.
these are revised plans based on um, staff review and agency comments. Of Ready for me? No, no, no. Let me get it up there first. Gotcha. Okay, so let's tighten it up a little bit. If you're a computer okay, no, genius, I'm so proud of you. Okay, hold on. Get this on here a bit more. Um, maybe you just want to review um, what your changes were. Yeah, so good, uh, good evening, uh, Chairman and Commission members. Uh, my name is uh, Ken Petrini. I'm with Snyder Civil Engineering. And we had, um, we've been for you before regarding this, this small 800 foot uh, water main extension from Binless and River, uh, uh, at the intersection of Binless and River Road. Um, we're going over the Binless Brook culvert and then that proceeds about 879 feet to the south there. Um, we had, we had meet, like Deb has said, we had a meeting with staff, with Deb and both Greg Hanover regarding the, this application. Uh, the one thing was brought up was regarding um, <clears throat> Public Works wanted the water main 10 feet from the existing sewer main. So we had adjusted the main, the water main to the Eastern side of the road to maintain that 10 foot separation that Greg had requested. Um, that had actually pushed us uh, closer to the wetlands, but we're still at the, on the edge of pavement for the majority of the project. Uh, the other thing that was asked of us was to um, show the specific location of equipment storage and pipe storage and things of that sort. So um, the owner at 321 River Road has allowed us to uh, store the material, store the, um, the excavators, dump trucks, or anything of that sort, but there will be nothing stored on the side of the road within the right-of-way at any time for any part of this project. The, um, the erosion and sediment control has been uh, updated as well. Um, staff had uh, mentioned again that this was a, a scenic road in the town of Groton. So what we have done to make sure that that maintains that is we, we've added some erosion to sediment control. We've moved the um, dewatering dirt bags, making sure that they were outside of the right or outside of the paved part of the right way, but not on any private property. And we've also added in some armor for trees as necessary along River Road and along the, 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 the path that we're taking for the new water main. And, and with that, I think that was pretty much everything that the staff had asked us to address um, in regards to, to the wetlands. Uh, there was one other note, which is a non-wetland issue, um, and, and it's regarding the crossing of the water main over the existing culverts. And we plan on, um, in a if, if, if required, we'll revise the plan to um, make a condition of, regarding the section of water main over, over the existing culverts, although that's in the tidal wetland area. It's not for, specifically for um, the uh, upland review and area that we're, we're developing. And with that, if you have any questions, uh, I'd be happy to answer anything you have for me. Do you mind going over the change that you referred to on the same thing? Right. So, all right. So, again, uh, stockpile area out yeah. is here outside of the upland review area. The um, the required separation distance between sewer and water has been shown at 10 feet, something per health code and the 
Public Works Department. And where was that before? Deb? It was closer, a little bit closer. I see. Okay. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Um, some changes in the tidal wetland area. Um, and again, this section right here is the only inland wetland. Everything else is tidal out here. So he's shown those things. The other thing he's shown on here is um, just right here, there's like a, a, a T in case these folks want to hook in. So that's correct. That's also over, he's talking over here. Them. It's yes. right near Bindless. Oh, okay. it's, and it's tidal yes. on both yes. sides. That's where I'm talking Right. Of. Right. And then what about the wrapping of trees? What was that about? Um, so in order to protect the trees that are close to the road, he has a detail on the plan to tree armor, basically, in case they need it, in case it looks like they're going to get too close. Mm -hmm. Is they outside the drip line um, or is it within? So some of the trees are really, really close to the road, so there's no way to stay outside the drip line. Yeah. And it shades over the over the road. Yeah. yeah. You protect the yeah. tree, but if you cut all the roots, it's exactly. I know. I know. I know. I know. And do you know which which where it was? No. Okay. Because actually there are some trees here, but not so many as over. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um so this is a scenic road. Um if they do any kind of modification to the pavement in terms of widening it or taking down stone walls or taking down significant trees, they have to go to the council. Um, to do any alteration that was in the road. That is not what they're proposing here. So they're aware that if they get into a situation where they have to do that sort of thing, they have to go to the council. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then do they have to stop work and all that? Oh, yeah. So they're only going up to Bindless Road? That's right. They're starting at Bindless and they're coming south. That's oh. right. But not, um, not the entire, not the entirety of River Road. Does it extend further up that way? So, will it or does it already or no it, it's in bindless right now so they're going to come south on river road where there is no public water there's a match line here and then this is the terminal uh, it's it's not very far down mm -hmm. did they so intend down to continue or no? okay. do they intend to continue no it, it can i correct me no. if i'm wrong this is for a, a, is a homeowner down here who is interested in hooking into the water is that right Correct, correct. The, the the wells down there, I guess, are brackish, and they they have to bring water in every day. So um, the owners have, have come have talked to Aquarian about extending the water main. So that that is the purpose for the extension of the water main as well. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Oh, it's possibly been. Yeah, it's, it's been this brackish water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okie dokie. All right, thanks. I do have a motion if you guys are ready. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, I'm not suggesting any conditions um, other than our standards, you know, filing the permit and land records and an inspection of erosion controls, that sort of thing. Make a motion to approve Inland Wetlands Agency 22-04 River Road Water Main Extension or the installation of a water line in the Upland Review Area to approve the River Road Water Main Extension application for the following reasons. There's no loss of wetland or water course associated with this application. The sediment and erosion control plan will protect the wetland during construction. This permit is subject to the four standard conditions. Do have a second? That's it. All right, any comments? All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? All right. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Miss your rocks. I have them. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Miss your rocks. Yeah. There they are. She got them out. We occasionally throw those into the audience, but yeah. <laughs> no, we don't. Yeah. Yeah. Just kidding. Just kidding. Yeah. All right. Drosdick Drive, multifamily residential development. All right. Can we set up a plan in front of you? Okay, I wasn't sure if yeah. we wanted to go. Yeah, we'll, we'll, put, we'll put it up. Uh, okay. 
Look at that. This doesn't curl. Yeah, I know. And I like it. Actually printing I, like, I, I like the yeah. colors too. That's helpful. Mm -hmm. I forgot the colors. That's why I just walked outside for a second. Oh, sometimes, okay. it's, sometimes it's helpful. Oh, it is. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Let's slide this this way. Well, thank you for having us tonight. Uh, for the record, my name is Bill Sweeney. I am a land use attorney and a partner at the law firm Beethoven Carberry in London. Uh, I know I met some of you at the site walk last month. And it's nice to meet the rest of you here uh, this evening. Uh, I represent uh, Marion Realty Partners, which is a multifamily developer based in Woodward, uh, Pennsylvania. And uh, they've submitted an application to this commission for an inland wetlands permit for upland review activities associated with the construction of a 201 unit multifamily residential development at 375 Drosbeck Drive. I just wanna take a second to get you acquainted with the site, just give you a little bit of background on what we're gonna be presenting to you tonight. And then I'm going to be turning it over to the rest of my team. Uh, joining me tonight is Seamus Moran. Seamus is the uh, civil engineer for the project. For those of you who are on the site walk, you might remember uh, Seamus from that meeting. Uh, Jim Cowan, our wetland scientist, is actually at another hearing right now. We're hoping that he's going to be able to um, sign in around 7.30 or so um, and be able to answer your questions and provide a, a brief presentation as well uh, for you this evening. Uh, Marion Realty Partners has entered in a per, into a purchase contract for this 17.61 acre parcel of land uh, located on the north side of Drosdick Drive. Uh, this is a property which is currently vacant. Um, it is sandwiched uh, between the Ahepa Apartments Project, the Ledges Project on Drosdick, and then if you're familiar with the Solstice Senior Living uh, Project, uh, Drosdick Drive is here, and up here is Interstate 95. So that's sort of surrounds the property. Uh, this is a residential multifamily zone. This is an area of town that the Planning and Zoning Commission has designated for multifamily development. And this is sort of one of the last pieces in that area that hasn't been developed uh, to date. Um, as you know, uh, for those of you who joined us on the site walk last month, um, this is a site that has been previously disturbed. Um, it was There was a tremendous amount of clearing and actual some filling that took place in this southern portion of the site. Um, it was associated with the ledges development uh, some time ago. Um, that area of the site is clear of, of larger trees. Um, it's colonized with a lot of invasives, as, as many of you saw. Um, but uh, there are still vast majority of the site, particularly the northern half of the site uh, and its eastern edge um, that is still forested. Um, and I think that's important because what we're going to talk about tonight and what we talked about at the site walk is the footprint of the development that we're proposing is really tailored to the disturbed portion of the site. And we're trying to develop this multifamily development in the area of the site that's already been impacted. Uh, we've taken great care, as Mr. Moran is going to show you in a few minutes, and as we talked about on the site walk, make sure that we have no direct impacts to any inland wetland areas on the property. We're not filling any wetlands. We're not excavating in any wetlands. There are no direct impacts whatsoever. Uh, we do have some what we call upland review area impacts, um, but we've worked very carefully uh, with our wetland scientist and with our engineer, make sure that we minimize and mitigate any indirect impacts or potential impacts um, to the on-site resource areas. Uh, Mr. Mann's going to come up in a couple minutes. He's going to walk you through the site. Um, he's going to walk you through our, our, our site plan, uh, the improvements that we're making. He's going to talk about um, the stormwater measures, the erosion control measures uh, that we're providing, and also some key engineering details to the project. Mr. Cowan, who we, I hope will join us uh, after that, he's going to talk to you about some of the wetland areas on the site. Uh, some of you have seen them now uh, who are out at the site. Um, he's going to talk about some of the mitigation recommendations he made uh, in the buffer area um, to actually improve the upland review area of these wetlands. Uh, he's also going to talk about uh, just very briefly his uh, a wetland function and uh, functions and assessment report that he did for the on-site wetlands, and that was really commissioned to make sure that our development, while we have no direct impact, has no indirect impacts on any of the wetlands habitat on the site, and also taking into account um, issues like amphibian breeding, um, not just on the site but off-site as well. So he's going to talk uh, briefly about that. Um, I think in a broader sense, I just want to point out a couple other items. As I said, this is a 16.71 acre site. 
Uh, our development is going to be focused on this southern portion of the site. It's going to take up, it's going to occupy about five acres of it, of the 17.61 acres. So 70% of this site is going to be untouched by development. I think that's really important, important because the northern half of the site, which is right now only subject to a Groton Public Utilities utility easement, is going to remain in its natural state. Um, during the site walk, um, staff and several commissioners um, voiced some concern or asked some questions about this northeastern area of the site. This is upland. This is developable land. It's a little bit steep, but you could build on it. But it's on the other side of the wetlands. Uh, it is very constrained in terms of access. Um, but there was some question about what our intent was for that area. Um, after the site walk, I had a chance to talk with Marion Realty Partners, our, my client, um, to express some of the concerns and questions the commission had. And after reviewing it internally, I'm, I'm happy to say on the record tonight um, that my client is willing to put a permanent conservation easement over the northeast corner of the site that upland area. Um, and I think that's a great thing uh, for the town. It's also good for the uh, amphibian habitat for us to have upland areas for them to migrate as well. And so we are willing to do that if that's something the commission um, you know, would look favorably upon. And, and we could certainly do that as a condition of any approval to this project. <clears throat> um, from our perspective, you know, what we're sharing with you tonight, um, we don't have any direct impacts. We've minimized and mitigated um, our indirect impacts. We've tried to protect the integrity of on-site and off-site wetland habitats. And we're trying to keep our development to the impacted uh, area of the site and leave the area that is natural, natural. Uh, and I think because of those reasons, we hope that you'll agree with us at the end of our presentation tonight that certainly this project does not propose any significant impact to inland wetland resources here in the town of Groton. Um, so for that, I, and with that, I'd like to turn it over Seamus Moran. Seamus is going to walk you through the project, explain to you the improvements, and then hopefully by that time, Jim Cowan will be on, on the call. Thank you so much. Good evening, Commission. Um, I'm Seamus Moran, a professional engineer in Connecticut. Um, nice to see everyone again tonight. I'll jump right into the proposed conditions. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with the site after our site walk and a uh, summary of the site. So um, getting into Thank you. Um, so what you see here is a, a zoomed in version of the larger 17 acre parcel. This is the five acre section that we're looking to develop. Um, there's the three way intersection right now in Jurassic Drive and Mitchell Lane that we're proposing a new two way access drive. There's if, as you're familiar with the site, it's uh, there's almost a woods road now that allows access up this way to an existing drive, uh, Ledgewood Road, for the ledges development. So we're proposing to connect that with an access access drive, and then off of that is where our building and our parking will be. Um, the actual building itself is an H, an uppercase H structure. So there's a leg here, a leg here, and a connection between the two. Um, that's actually on floors two through five. So as you enter the site, you're at about elevation 30 in the, in the very front of the site, we're entering the site. There's a, a lower amenity section. It's a single story that you can access, enter the building. But as you, come, as you continue up, there's a drive under parking lot um, at elevation 45. And then above that, at elevation 55 or so, 56, 57 maybe. Um, is the is the start of the living quarters. So uh, from there above is the living. So um, the building is, is somewhat fit into the grade. As, as I mentioned, it's 30 in the street and about a high point of 60 in the back corner here. Um, so as you get to the second floor of uh, living space, it's actually a walkout in the, the back side of it. So this patio in the back side here is actually an acre patio. There's another, as I mentioned, there's an H structure here. So there's a courtyard between the H that's a, a raised patio. So in more green space in, in between the, uh, the, the building itself. Um, Wait, can you re explain that? I'm, I'm, so I get the parking sure. under and so at the first no, level or the second? Sorry. So there's a, no, no problem. This is confusing switching. and yeah. so as you're coming into the site, you're at elevation 30, um, there's a, a single story amenity. You enter there, you come up to the garage level, which is elevation 45. Mm -hmm. And then you continue on up, it comes back to the back of the property, you're at about 58. So 58 in the back, third in the, in the front. So what's actually the second story 
is actually at grade in the back. So that this little patio is at grade here, but in this section in the front, where this is 45, I'm sorry, where this is 57 elevation, this is continues as a corridor through here that connects this back patio section on the second floor. So that's all at 57. It's but a because, patio, not, not gr uh, gr ground level space. Not, so not the parking is okay. under the patio that's too. Okay. Yep, that's correct. How many floors of living space? So there's going to be floors two through five of living space. Oh, really? Three floors? Four of living? floors, yeah. Two, three, four, and five. Oh, four. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, wow. The patio mm -hmm. carried up. It's, it's all open? Correct. It's mm -hmm. all so open. So everybody gets front and back windows? Correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. Do you have a floor plan of the second or other floors? Um, we don't have architectural plans with us today. Um, I know they're still developing those. Um, but each unit will have its own little balcony as well. Mm -hmm. um, that's, I think that's what their amenities are trying to do. And uh, each will have a window uh, access. Is the occupancy? Uh, total number of units, 201 yeah. units. Mm -hmm. um, 201 units and 260 parking spaces. So below the building in that parking, I'm sorry, in the garage level of the parking space of, of the parking garage is 120 spaces. And then there's 141 around the property. Um, Where do the visitors park? So the, the the parking calculation right now, it's 239 is the minimum, 339 is the maximum. The, the developers, they have a, a certain ratio they're looking to get to for parking. Candidly, we, we lost a few spots recently with some revisions, so it's a little bit less than what they really intended and what they wanted, but they're still um, they're still happy with it. They're still ready to move forward with the development. Um, we, you know, we lost a few here, we lost another one down here. I think in total, we lost about four spaces since the site walk. But, what do the pink and green lines mean? So that is just so um, everybody can see. The green line is the edge of the wetland. This interior pink is the 50-foot review line. This darker darker line with the pink is the 100-foot review line. So the building itself is almost entirely out, uh, almost entirely outside the 100-foot review, except for this little um, corner of the, the single-story building. Um, the parking. We tried to, to establish a 50 foot setback from all of the parking level. Um, as you know, there's a retaining wall that we're proposing on the edge of the parking to hold what ends up what amounts to being almost a 50 foot setback line, but it's also the, the tree clearing limit. Um, so as we walked the site, we, we kind of saw where the stakes were, we could see where the edge of the clearing limits were. So we tried to hold that as best as we could, which I think we could probably see a little bit better on the next sheet, which is the grading sheet. The grading and drainage plan. Again, this is uh, this, so this is grading drainage and, and most importantly the stormwater improvements that we're proposing. So the existing hydrology of the site actually comes from off-site, comes across our property, and it splits. So there's a section that comes over to the wetland, and there's a little sliver that comes down here and gets out into Jurassic Drive. So what we're doing is some of this that's coming off-site, we're capturing this in uh, catchment system. And across the site, there's an upper level um, detention and infiltration system that's below the patio. And there's another uh, infiltration bottle retention basin uh, in the back corner. And then in the lower level, where we couldn't capture, um, we couldn't infiltrate, it's strictly a detention system. So what happens is half of this, half of this, I'm sorry, the front half of this building and a good section of this pavement area is going to be going to this upper infiltration system. The lower, or I'm sorry, this back half of the building and uh, a good portion of this pavement here is going to this uh, bioretention basin. And then there's a little bit, a um, little bit of this access drive here and a lower section here that can't, based on the grades, can't get to either practice. So this is a detention system and a detention and treatment system that discharges to the existing catch basin in the road. Um, those as I mentioned, these are both infiltration systems with an isolator row. Um, this also has a hydrodynamic separator um, prior to the basin. The water quality volume is nine inches below the low orifice. So it's actually we're infiltrating in excess of the water quality, the water quality volume, uh, as well as the 80% TSS removals for the hydrodynamic separator. So um, this basin here does have significant stormwater management um, abilities, uh, as well as the this infiltration basin infiltration structure here um, is well in excess of the water quality volume. 
for infiltration. <laughs> Down below. So this is, uh, as I meant, this is detention, so we're not infiltrating, not infiltrating. but the ice, there's three separate isolator rows. Mm -hmm. um, so the isolator rows are treated for a water quality flow. They, you calculate the water quality volume and then convert that into a flow rate. Mm -hmm. And that's um, based on the number of chambers, that's how much flow can go through them. So that's, again, that's an excess of the water quality flow. So I can come back to this if there's any questions. However, I'll just move on to the Utility plan quickly. Uh, we do have water, sanitary sewer, and gas and um, and electric out in Jurassic Drive. So we're proposing a 12-inch main into the site and then an 8-inch loop system. Uh, we also just recently added, based on some ground utility comments, um, another 8-inch connection, another 8-inch line that comes up the drive to the to tie into the existing 12-inch main that's uh, part of le um, the ledges complex. So we'll have a, essentially redundancy all over the place. We'll have a 12 inch, an eight inch loop and then another connection up here. So we'll connect to two 12 inch mains for an eight inch loop. And that's all under the pavement that you have. Yep, correct. Um, the gas actually ends a little over 300 feet to the west. We've asked uh, Eversource to extend that line. So this extension um, in the road is to be by others. And then once we have that extension to our drive, we'll pull that into our into our development. Yes, correct. Um, there's two separate ENS, uh, soil erosion and sediment control plans. The first is we took the existing grading plan, the, I'm sorry, the existing conditions plan. And we just, we show the, how the contours will work, how the proposed interim grading will work. That way we can install our practices before we start construction. So that's what we have here. That's if you take the site and you build out your your um, your temporary sediment traps and temporary sediment basins, this is what it'll look like. Once those are in place, you can start construction on our building. So the building will be constructed, and after those, uh, after everything is stabilized, and we have um, we have our catchment system in, in in place and our basin in place. Um, every, every, everything obviously is paved over and the final grading is, is in place. How long does it take to have that, get that first part stable and before you start doing um, that? You mean just the interim grading? Yeah. This is the really interim setting would, up the system. I hope it's fairly quick. It's, uh, it's just earthwork at this point. Um, so basically you just dig that out, you right. know, stabilize it before you start doing yes, it? Yes, exactly. But you have hay bales and yep. sun. Yeah, so what, yeah. Can you give a little more detail on that? Yeah, I'm sorry, sure. Um, so what we have shown here is at the edge of disturbance here. There's a silt fence with hay bales that we're proposing along this down gradient edge of where all the clearing limits or the clearing limits where the disturbance will be. Um, these temporary sediment traps are sized based on um, the 2002 manual for, you know, you have a certain level of water and a certain level of sediment and you collect that volume based on the contributing area. That's how these basin sizes got to be what they are. Um, and so we'll install these basins. Then once these are in place and stabilized, then we're ready to start construction. So if there's any sediment that's moving, it will it will get captured in these temporary sediment traps and temporary sediment basins. And so I, I guess, so, so what, is a temp what is a stable temporary sediment basin? Um, <laughs> It's you, essentially if you have your once you excavate it out and you have a hole in the ground, yeah. you want to seed it and you want to make sure that it's Thank not you. going to go anywhere. So it, it's, it would be seeded. It's not yes. just like okay. yes, correct. That's what I'm looking for. Thanks. So uh, just stabilize. So if, uh, in a rainstorm, it won't get washed out. So and then so do you have someone uh, check that out before uh, then the work would okay. Thanks. Sure. What's the schedule? Do you know? Is there a schedule? I don't I don't know the schedule. I know. Um, they're chomping at the bit to get moving. So I'm, just, I'm, su I'm sure as soon as they can get going, they will. Um, it's, it's kind of a hold up on us. We're gonna submit, we have this submit from planning and zoning, which we'll be doing in the next week or so as well. Um, so that's, that's where we are. So we, we need that. Um, this is a major traffic generator for more than 200 parking spaces. Um, and it's combined with the ledges. So we have to go to the DOT um, and DP as well for the stormwater, a DP general permit for stormwater discharge. So there's still a couple of levels um, that we have to go through. All right, so get to the right. A couple of levers lower than us, right? No, absolutely not. This is <laughs> this is where it all starts. <laughs> That's what I mean. You guys are with us, yeah. It's like, it's like my work. As soon as, as soon as this stuff is done, I'm out of the way. I mean, I've got fun stuff. Again. 
construction. Um, so this is the second phase of the NS. This is just as you're starting construction of the building. Um, this is the landscaping plan, which I should have printed out in color. I didn't. Um, of course, there's substantial uh, landscaping plantings. Straight frontage trees were limited. There's a wetland here, so we kind of just put a bunch along the front. Um, interior islands each have trees, so the landscape plantings along the foundation. Um, I hope this meets the regulations. Uh, the landscaping plan, and then the, the trees in the central patio. No, no, um, and that's. I think they're, they'll probably have trees, but they'll be potted trees, small oh, potted yeah, trees. Yeah. Otherwise, no, yeah. nothing underneath. <laughs> yeah, correct. Well, there would be something here, but we don't want to compromise the system here. So, we don't want the roots to be a tree. Yep, <laughs> that's correct. This also, I wish I printed out in color, which I did the last time. I didn't think of it this time. This is the uh, landscape, I'm sorry, the wetland mitigation planting plan. I swear this is much better in color. Um, this is one color. This is shown in a zone where we're proposing all of these wetland buffer plantings. So after the site is stabilized and the, the final grade is in place, we'll come back in and um, we have substantial uh, wetland buffer plantings that we're proposing in that area that was disturbed and even in the areas that weren't disturbed just to create a nice natural buffer uh, between the edge of the wetland and our limit of disturbance and beyond. Um, there are a couple of plugs that we're proposing within the base, I'm sorry, within the wetland itself. And the last is a, a few stormwater management. Uh, so there's not grass underneath then, is it? You've got the shrubs and the wetland plants. So the, yeah, so there will be, I, I believe it's grass and well, wetland buffer plantings okay. as well. Um, and the bioretention basin plantings are I believe in this column here. I oh, know this is so zone three is the upland review area. Zone one is the basin. So this is here. Zone one is the basin. Mm -hmm. So these plantings are going in the basin. Um, there's 50, there's two separate sets of 50 plugs going within the wetland. And um, all of these plantings here in the last column are in the upland review area. So this was uh, generated, this was developed by our wetland scientist, uh, Jim Cowan, um, which uh, he is here. We can talk about it. Otherwise, I can. That's so, part of this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, whenever you're ready. I will let him speak. Okay. Um, you're ready if we're ready for Jim, we can take Jim now. Otherwise, I um, did have one question sure. about the um, the catchment and the treatment of the water. Yep. In the winter time, when you're salting and cleaning down yes. or whatever, you need to kind of a steep so How does that be important to you? Um, so, in the upper practice, the isolator rows, this section here, the isolator rows, there's an, I'm sorry, the, the infiltration system, there's an isolator row, and that removes uh, suspended solids and oils and greases, uh, oils and, and grease. Um, I think it's 80% TSS and actually 90 something percent of um, oils and grease um, in the isolator row. The basin itself, prior to the basin, we have a, a hydrodynamic separator that'll remove the uh, uh, also done, so this 80 percent of suspended solids. So um, hopefully that removes a lot of that. We do have outlet hoods proposed in a catch basin as well. I know that's not for salt and, and things like that, but if there is debris that finds its way in there, we'll have outlet hoods. Um, as, a, as a, an additional measure. And it's a maintenance statement. Uh, yes, that's yeah. on sheet two, I believe. How do we uh, deb find about maintenance in the, in the town? Is it? So, so, so the, that the owners are responsible for maintenance. Uh, there is a maintenance schedule on here, and it will be approved along with the site plan. Mm -hmm. So it essentially becomes a zoning violation if they don't follow it. Um, Typically, what we'll do is we'll require reports for the first couple of years just to see how, make sure they're doing it number one, see how much material they're pulling out, and then it gets adjusted when they figure out really how much material is going into the systems. Because typically, they're, that makes sense. Yeah, at the very beginning, they're they're in there a lot, just making sure that they're pulling things out. And if it turns out what you're doing, do it once every nine months. They just they adjust. 
And how about the underground one? I remember when we had those underground ones of, of under stuff. Yep. I'll, I'll pull that plan up. The, so the maintenance plan here, there's a, some general notes, then there's a bottom retention basin maintenance, um, and then the separator. I'm going to come back to the salt issue oh. that you're raising. I'm sorry? I was going to come back to the salt issue that you were raising. And that, it is a very difficult issue, okay? And it plagues us all over the state. And uh, what to do with the salt, okay? I assume you're going to be generating, cleaning roads here with salt and stuff and, uh, and all. And, uh, especially with that great, especially. I, I guess it's a, a lot of it depends on why is this wetlands wet? Okay, let me see. So we're talking about runoff right now. Is it primarily runoff coming from this hill, or is it groundwater discharging to that wetlands? Do we have anybody know? Do we have any idea? It's part of a greater system that got part? kind of um, <coughs> fragmented throughout yeah, the years. It was a very large yeah, system yeah. at one time before all these buildings were built. In 95. Yeah, in 95, 95 cut through it. I think our wetland scientists can speak to the hydrology. Yeah, I think I'd like to hear something but about that. I would point out, mm -hmm. if you look at our plans, whether it's subsurface detention, infiltration, or it's surface detention and then discharge, we don't have any direct pipes leading into the wetland. And really, the issues of salt and salt contamination of wetlands really come from the paved leak offs primarily old style development and quite frankly still to this day the paved leak offs on town roads yeah. and that's where the majority of salt contamination because there's no land there's no upland between the discharge mm -hmm. point and the edge of wetland to actually attenuate the, those salts mm -hmm. we don't have that in this design and in fact there's no modern design that allows you i mean i, I was a planner 20 years ago and 20 years ago we weren't letting people put pipes anymore directly into water bodies but a lot of the paved leak offs have been fixed now. There still are some, but in this design, I would point out that we have no direct discharges to any surface water body. We have room basically between the discharge point and any of the uh, surface water uh, resources. But the system you're creating is relying on these infiltration basins to handle the water and uh, um, and and or evaporation, and which could concentrate salt, and eventually that water will get down in the ground. That's why I asked as to why the wetlands are wet, and it, as if it's groundwater discharge that ultimately could be a problem. And uh, um, on the other hand, if it was surface runoff, which is sort of the opposite of what we're saying, might like, be better, you know. And that is, there are times of the year when the salt will be diluted. Okay, right, because you're going to just, just rain down going down the ground. There are times of the year where the soil will concentrate as to whether or not what the net effect is. I don't know if anyone knows. I think that uh, comes out in the water quality volume. So if there's salt or there's soil or anything like that, sediment uh, in the roadway, 90% of that is removed in that first one inch rainfall. That's why they that's why they design that's why they make you design it for the one inch. Um, and we are designing that water quality volume for in excess of infiltration for both of the infiltration basins. So it'll, for it to pool and, uh, yeah, I understand your point. It'll, it has nowhere to go. It's going to sit in the basins. Um, um, so that's why we have to just clean them out um, and, and maintain them. So. How about your snow removal when, when you're using salt? How do you go with that? Where do you that so um, we did discuss that with them. And let me show you. There's an area up in the upper. Portion of the site. Here. So they, they do have loaders uh, on site, and there's this area here that's actually relatively flat. Um, our proposed drive is coming up this way, the development right here. Um, they'll have to move rather than dumping it over the wall and into the basin like nobody wants. Um, they have loaders and they can move that snow um, to this flat area up here. It's outside the 100 foot review area, and it's just can't really tell by these. But the is that, of is that adjacent to the thing. buildings that were already existing? Can you remind me where we yeah, were when we were standing? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so the one other area that I'm concerned about in the field was that kind of loose way. I'm pretty sure. It's the, okay. So that's yeah. here. So, so, 
Can you get a little bit more specific about what so you're doing? So what that about? is, so we're not, this is the only way for Groton Utilities to access their transmission main. Okay. Um, they do have this easement, which is impossible, as you can see with the steep slope to yes. get to it, yes. other than coming up this woods road and coming down this path here. So based on our conversations with Groton Utilities, um, that's their only way to get access to this section here. So we're essentially maintaining it. We're part of our improvements. So we, we lost a couple of parking spaces that it helps it is um, we're essentially creating a, a little drive for them to get to that edge of it. Um, we're leaving it open and we'll have a gate. So, oh, so wait, I don't see a little drive for them. So slow down there. You go up the hill, the walking, when we walk down. Here's the, the, the path. You can see it. It's oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Here. Uh, That's okay. the existing path. This here, this was parking spaces before. And now instead of parking spaces, we've created a, a striped section. So that way, if a vehicle has to get over to it, path. to the existing so, path. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, so we're not. And that'll be paved? Um, our site will be paved up to their existing, up to that path. We're not improving that path. Um, that's up to Groton. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, you need, but, but up to that, that stripey line is paved. Uh, yes, correct. It's paved. It was shown as parking on the last yeah, plan. Yeah, it has to be kept open in the event. As you remember, if anybody looked down the line, there's that huge engine tower. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, really yeah. old. That never needed to be repaired after a hurricane or something. We need a way in to do that. One of the structures. And so I'm just trying to understand. So it was kind of like this. So are you going to pave? It wasn't really, are you going to make something flat to pave or I'm not really sure. So what our, our proposed grades are we're matching into the existing grade right there. So we're proposing to match the grade at this, at the lip here. So that, that's really, as soon as we, as soon as we're done with our pavement here, it's just, however, they have to get to it over their path. Uh, they're like, they'll use the same path, um, but we're so providing. Really at this point. Yeah, correct. And we're not proposing to improve that. So do you need to, so you need to change the grade to you see what I'm trying to understand? Because no, I no. it just feels like the, yeah. the pavement is going to be slanted down and it doesn't make a lot of sense. So this um see these contours here. This is a is a 56 contour. So this is there's a little bit of a high point. This is 57. This mm -hmm. is actually the high point for the site, and the, then it starts to come back down here again. This 56 ties in right at the corner. There's an existing 56 contour. Okay. This 57 will come back up. So it's tying in right at 50 elevation 56. So before it really sluices down. Yes, is that what you're saying? Okay. All right. That's because what I was saying. You said that the top of the building is at grade, right? Yes. Right. All right. I, I understand now. Sorry about that. Um, we can certainly come back. Yeah, I, I do think if we have Jim um, available. He has his hand raised. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Well, I know Jim, James Cowan is Jim Cowan, so. Okay. And, and someone thinks that this is also Jim Cowan? I know he's a heartfulness meditator. Okay. So, maybe he felt he couldn't get in that way. So he wants to ask a question. Okay. 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 So you need to one of your devices you need to, to mute. Um, and I've promoted you to panelists, so in a minute. Let me give me give me drop your other device. Yeah, turn off one of your devices. Log in point. Can you hear me? You have two devices. We'll turn off the James Cowan one. Maybe I can just take him off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mute, try muting him. Uh, <laughs> All right, so I'm going to promote. Okay, let's try this one.
Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. All right. Um, so I, I heard a number of questions and I think the one was uh, about the wetland. Is it a, a groundwater wetland or is it a um, one that uh, experiences uh, surface runoff? And the answer is it's a combination of both. Um, it's what we would call a, a hillside wetland. And so uh, there's a groundwater component and obviously there's a surface runoff component as well. Um, so it varies depending on the time of year, um, how high the groundwater is. So obviously in the high groundwater months in the winter and spring, there's gonna be more groundwater runoff. Um, and then the our, our more groundwater discharge and then the runoff will occur um, subject to precipitation, how much uh, is coming through. Um, so in terms of uh, salt that the question was raised, uh, one of the benefits here is with um, infiltration at multiple points that spreads it out. So that's a low impact development strategy. So you don't concentrate all of your stormwater at one point. So you have your infiltrators plus an infiltration basin. Um, so that, that spreads it out. Um, the other mitigating factor is the fact that, that um, there is a stream that does carry the combination of surface flow and uh, groundwater discharge. So it's a flow through system. It's, it's unlike a, a pond that if you keep adding salt to the pond over time, it's going to become saltier. Um, and um, this will, is a system that flushes through. Um, but it, it, it will vary from time to time, de depending on the time of year and how much salt is put down. Um, and, um, and I agree with Bill that, that salt is one of the difficult issues because it is water soluble. Uh, it, it doesn't typically stick to uh, your solids um, and sediments. Um, you want, do you have other questions for me or do you want me to kind of go through the uh, mitigation? Yeah, Jim, if you could focus on the mitigation, that would be great. And then I, I think also if you could touch a little bit on your habitat analysis with the uh, biological sinks, that would be helpful too. Okay. Okay, well, let, let's start with, with the biological aspect since that's what drives the mitigation or that's what informed the mitigation plan. Um, so it's a fairly typical um, wetland system. And I did notice these two areas that were um, ponded at, at the lower um, near Drostic Drive, which I call pool one and two. And they're separated by a, a wetland berm. Um, and then um, upslope, um, yeah, those are the two. And then upslope um, close to that, corner is pool three or I can't remember. yeah and that at the lower end of that there's uh, an informal stone crossing that was designated as a cart path and so that kind of holds back the flow and there was ponding in in those areas so I I recommended that uh, I study those further uh, for any uh, amphibian breeding activity. Um, I did that in the spring and uh, you have um, the results before you. There was a uh, pool one 
had uh, the most uh, spotted salamander egg masses. Pool two was very minimal and that receives a stormwater discharge uh, from solstice um, driveway. Um, and then pool uh, three had five or so egg masses and there were some loose in the uh, leaf litter in the bottom. So they, I may have missed some because they were not evident. Um, and when we did our site walk uh, last month, we had seen that pools one and two were no longer ponded. And that was, I believe was about mid-June. Um, and so drying up that early would not allow any egg masses or any, uh, any larvae to survive. They need to go at least till July for wood frogs and end of July typically for spotted salamanders. Um, so the hydrology is, is marginal. And I think largely because the culvert outlet under Drosdick Drive um, is, is lower than those pools. So they, it's basically like the bottom of a bathtub um, that drains them. Um, so as long as there's a, plenty of rain, they might hold up, but then as rainfall decreases and the uh, growing season continues, uh, they, they lose their ponded condition. Um, in mid-June, pool three still had water in it. Um, I checked it on our site walk. It was down about a foot, so it's marginal, but it does have some potential. Um, so my, and, and the other thing we'll go back to is Rich Snarsky had looked at these in 2014 and did not find any amphibian activity at that time. And he was there again in the spring. So my sense is that these, um, these areas are expansion as, as the amphibians are expanding from the large wetland um, east of the solstice. Um, that's good vernal pool habitat. And um, the amphibians have found their way into these areas as is their uh, biology to, to try to expand. And so they're attempting to expand in this area, but the potential is marginal. Having said that, there are amphibians in that area. And so the mitigation plan um, was to protect the undisturbed perimeter, knowing that the large central area had been um, highly disturbed and used as a stockpile area for soil um, and um, overburden that had been removed from the um, property to the west. Um, so the goal was to protect the undisturbed tree canopy and, and that area and to reinforce that edge, um, providing coarse woody debris and logs to provide amphibian habitat. And also knowing that they, they live in the woods, they don't live out in the open area. So their, their potential is limited also because there's, it's not a wooded site except for that perimeter. So the goal is to protect that and to increase its habitat value, both for amphibians and for other wildlife. And one of the sure things that we can do on a site like this is increase the pollinator and butterfly habitat. Um, that's very doable. And so the planting plan uh, does provide a significant diversity of flowering plants that provide nectar for um, pollinators, as well as host plants for butterflies, like the milkweeds. We have three different species of milkweeds proposed. Um, so those are the two, um, two goals for the plantings. Um, and uh, to uh, enhance that uh, upland review area and the disturbed area to focus more on the pollinator plants. 
and of course, an important part of the mitigation plan is plantings in the basin that enhance the biofiltration of the stormwater. Um, so that's the nutshell um, of, of the mitigation plan. Questions? No? Yes, I'm Thank here. You. Thank you, Jim. Um, I, I do want to just for the commission's edification, um, it took us a while to get this issue resolved with public utilities. I know Deb has been on in training all week, so um, she was not able to complete her review of our revised plans. And thus, you don't have a draft motion tonight. So um, we're very respectful of your processes, and particularly of Deb because she's she's great to work with. So um, we, we are we are more than um, happy to come back to you on August 10th at your next meeting, um, and then hopefully at that time, if Deb has any additional comments, we'll be able to address them, uh, and hopefully we'll have a draft motion for you to at least consider. Um, but we do really appreciate your time tonight. Um, we think this is a great project, and I know that. You know, the people who are on the site walk, I, I think you saw, and I hope the people who came afterwards saw, we are really trying to do an environmentally thoughtful project and trying not to disturb land that hasn't already been disturbed. So um, this is a, a site that's going to be used for multifamily. We're think, we think we're doing it in sort of a creative and responsible way, and we hope you agree with us. So um, if, if, if it pleases the commission, if you'd like to table us to the 10th, we'll come back and hopefully we can finish this up now. Bill, could I that just... would be the best. Bill, could I just make one other comment about the mitigation plan? Yeah, absolutely, Jim. Um, and, and it comes when you're talking about this as a multifamily um, uh, facility. One of the other, I think, really positive things about putting in a, the pollinator habitat and all the plantings is as an amenity for um, the residents and also uh, educational value and a connection to nature. Um, I would envision putting in some uh, educational signs and it's right, right at their doorstep, literally, to go out and, and ob observe monarch butterflies, a variety of butterflies and, um, and the beauty. Um, I always do um, plantings that are aesthetically pleasing as well. So. Um, it will be an amenity for for the residents. Yeah, could I see the sheet with the plants? I don't want to hold you up, but I'd love to just see the, the plants that you're planning for that buffer. They're actually pretty good. Nice to see. Oh, the colored sheet. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I thought maybe. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm just going to roll it up. Yeah. If I could just add to what Jim said yeah. too, um, you know, unlike a single family subdivision where you would sell multiple lots off to different owners who may or may not care about the wetlands, you've got a single owner on this property with a professional management company that you know that it's going to be kept up to a certain level and standard. And this is certainly not a not an inexpensive project. So um, these are going to be extremely you know high quality units, uh, and I think this will be a project that we can all be proud of when it's done. And so that leads me to my question. So in the uh, planted mitigation area, are you going to mow around the plants that you are placing there? What is that? Yeah. I'll, Jim, can you answer the issue of, of the in the mitigation area, the seed mix and whether that is a mow or no mow area? Um, it's basically a no mow area. Um, there will be um, annual cutting back. Um, what I, uh, there will, the no mo there is a no mo lawn seed mix and that's for the perimeter of pavements um, where people need to walk. Usually it's a, a three to five foot verge. Um, and so that area could be mowed, but then as you get into the upland review area, it would be more meadow transitioning to shrubland and woodland and uh, you'll see in the, um, I believe it's in the in the basin protocol, uh, management protocol. We recommend an annual cutting back, but to, but to leave what we call stem stubble, and that stubble up to 
12 to 18 inches is important for overwintering pollinators. And also um, pollinators this year use last year's stems for laying their eggs and so forth. So it's not gonna be a manicured mowed area. And that's why I think there's some value in having some edu educational signs in saying that this is, this is a pollinator pathway. This is um, um, monarch butterfly. This is a habitat area. Um, in, the, in the conditions. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you so much for your time tonight. And again, we'll be back on August 10th and hopefully we'll be ready to go. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Okay, good night. Good night. <laughs> Leash plants. I got my paper that is. <laughs> These are small ones. I feel like. Remember those ones that used to be playing? You ready? Next victim. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> One forty-seven Pequot Avenue. Find some division. I'm going to recuse myself since I'm in a butter. Okay. And uh, who would like to be a? Would like to be Dave for a minute. I'll be Dave for a minute. Uh -huh. Gary, maybe I adjourn. <laughs> I'll meet you. All right. I am engineer. He's going to have to come. Okay. Did you want to share your screen or do you want me to lay out the plan? If you could lay out the plans, that'd be wonderful. I think you'll probably be able to see them much better than if I share my screen. Okay. Set up. No. So I think you folks will remember at the last meeting, this is a seven lot subdivision in between Pequot and Allen. There is essentially a drainage ditch along Allen Street that flagged out as an inland wetland right in here. They have permission to access Allen Street with a driveway and locating the pipes and do some grading and utilities there. So we just Get the camera going here. <laughs> you really need some tape on these things, mm -hmm. except that they move around. So. Okay. All right, does everybody know where this is? Essentially, um, this was John Mason. That helps you guys. Okay. Thanks, right. John Mason. Well, and also it helps too. That's the yeah. turn into the other subdivision. That's exactly right. Yeah. Okay, Kirk, all you. Sure. Good evening, everyone. For the record, Kirk Procherena, K U R T P R O C H O R E N A from Guerrero Engineering Associates, 104 Hill Road, Groton, Connecticut. Uh, this is the Hines subdivision, as mentioned, it's a seven lot subdivision on Allen Street, which is State Route 614. Um, and we're here tonight to talk about the wetlands um, on the east side of the site. Uh, we are putting in a culvert to access uh, essentially across a Connecticut Department of Transportation drainage ditch that was constructed uh, in concert with Connecticut Route 614. Uh, we're proposing to put in an engineered culvert and a crossing. So our disturbance of the jurisdictional wetlands is associated with that crossing. Uh, the wetlands were delineated by uh, Ian Cole uh, in August of 2021 in that area. 
And uh, he did uh, confirm that it is a functional drainage ditch, uh, but it does meet the definition of wetlands based on, on the soil types. Um, our proposal will disturb approximately uh, 452 square feet of that wetland. Uh, however, it's critical for us to maintain full functionality of the drainage characteristics of that feature um, in order to get approval from Connecticut DOT and our design does achieve that. Um, we feel that the design has no impact uh, as these wetlands really have no functional quality beyond uh, serving as a, as a drainage feature associated with Connecticut Route 614. Um, part of our design, in addition to the culvert, includes some additional uh, bank stabilization with some uh, engineer products. Um, of course, during construction, we'll have full erosion and sedimentation control features in place. Um, once our uh, seeding uh, is well established and everything is stabilized to our satisfaction, and we'll of course inspect that when it's done, the temporary measures will be removed and then uh, the erosion control matting that is part of our design will remain to stabilize the soils. Once the uh, vegetation grows in, that matting uh, will not be visible, but we think it'll be a good feature to maintain stability of the side slopes uh, of, all, of the culvert that's put in there. Um, with that, I'd love to entertain any questions that the commission may have. Just because it's hard to understand, he said there's going to be a culvert. It's just a culvert yeah, oh, to take uh, the flow. It's yes, hard to absolutely. Understand. Yes, there is. There's a pipe underneath yeah. this driveway. Um, the yeah. grading on either side of the driveway will be stabilized with erosion control, and yeah. that will stay in place. And then pave on the top. Uh, the apron will be paved at any rate. Yeah, I'm not sure whether or not they're going to pave their driveway as it goes in, but the apron will be paved. And is this going to serve all seven lots? No. No, no. So there, there are two driveways. There's one off of Allen Street. There's another one here mm -hmm. off of Pequot. They don't connect. Is my question. Um, so, I, you know, my understanding is this is going to be essentially a family compound. So there will be pathways and what it, it's you know, parents and then several children who want to build here. Oh. So there will be some connection between the lots. It may not be a formal driveway through there, but paths and and whatnot. Who's responsible for long-term maintenance? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it will not be a, a public road. <coughs> it's a driveway. It's a driveway. Oh, yeah. It's a driveway. Mm -hmm. so there are two. There's one to get to those four buildings. And then yeah, then yeah, that's, that's exactly. fine for now, exactly. but then there's yeah. always the future. You see, yeah, but you can kind of see there's like, you know, a little path through here. And so, yeah. 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 But basically, four lots will be served off Pequot, and four lots will be served off Allen. This, this, in this three, decision. three off of Pequot, four off. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, three Correct. Off. Right. And what's the future for that one that has the lean on it or whatever? Oh, this this right this area here has a uh, a deed restriction for no disturbance. Right now, it's part of this lot. At some point, they may come in and subdivide it. Um, they'll have to deal with you know all the zoning access requirements and whatever. Um, but I, I don't anticipate that needing the wetland permit. Oh, okay. Those are rain gardens. And the rain gardens, just to, to, to expand on that, the rain gardens are part of our stormwater management strategy for the subdivision. So that's to maximize infiltration of the stormwater. And you can see some of the grading contours that we've indicated that will direct stormwater to those rain gardens. All right. All right. So, I mean, as far as a wetland application yeah. goes, there's not a whole lot of impact here. I mean, they'll have other issues when they submit for subdivision. But they actually have. Anyway, I do have a, a draft motion for you guys. Um, again, there are no additional conditions other than the, the usuals filing the permit and land records, um, calling for a sediment control inspection, um, letting us know if there's a change in ownership during construction so we know who to talk to about erosion control. Make a motion to approve Inland Wetlands 22 06 Hines Subdivision 146 Pequot Avenue with the construction of a driveway across wetlands, including a culvert, grading, and utilities, construction of houses, and grading within the Upland Review area. 
approved the Heinz subdivision application for the following reason. The wetland is man-made drainage ditch and the driveway culvert has been appropriately sized. There are no other regulated activities made inevitable by this permit. Second. Any discussion? Sure. Discussion. Always you can discuss. I don't have any questions. I'm asking you. Oh, oh that's right. You're I'm Dave. <laughs> good job. <laughs> I'm all set Very discussion. good. Well done. That's it. You get it the next time he's you gone. <laughs> if not, yeah, all those now you favor. say all those in favor saying aye. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any opposed? No. <laughs> Any abstain? All right. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. There's no IT right. with this group. Great job. We're all set. Thank you very much. We're gonna have a public hearing. Those guys can't be home. Just saying. No, I need to. They're really hard to understand. Yeah, talk to Sean about that, about yeah. these speakers. Because um, I mean, it's been hard for all of us. Yeah. I know. I know. Was good. I know. I don't. I don't know what that message means that comes up because there's no other applications running on this computer. computer. Oh. So I don't. I don't know what that is. But we'll get it figured out. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. That one away. Beyond the gun oh, drill. it hasn't been that long. It's just been a little long. It's long for us. Well, we've had meetings that go till midnight. <laughs> Not yeah. recently, thank goodness. Yeah. But. yeah. Oh, yeah. We have like some old days. We had to set a curfew one time. Remember that? Yeah, we were going to go yeah. at a certain time. We're all like this. <laughs> Not you, Barbara. <laughs> All right. All right. Gunji Wong. Gunji Wong Road. Uh, 1051. Gunji Wong Road. There we go. Uh, yeah. Is this the one I missed? Oh, no. This is our revised uh, the garage proposal where we moved up the garage even farther away from the pond where the wetlands. So we have a, now a silt fence. And then we move this up. So we're approximately like 168 feet away from that pond now. Good. It's as far as we can get up to. And then we put it right next to the setback. So it's as far as up as it can possibly go at this point. And then we have the, the silt fence. There's also a revised soil report that yeah. happened. Um, and I've been out on the site, regardless of what these topo lines show, it is really, really flat. Yeah. <laughs> it is tree. And it's quite a ways from the farm. Okay. Great. All right. Well done. Here's another one. It was so productive. I know, right? I know. Again, this is another one where there really are no additional conditions other than the standard ones um, that are necessary. So there you go. Uh, you last one, take a turn. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the weapon. Um, agency 22 uh, 07, the Old Tanner Garage at 1051 Gunji Wump Road uh, for the construction of a garage engraving with the within the upland review area. A motion to approve for the following reasons. There is no loss of wetland or water course associated with the application through the property's flat and the sediment and erosion control plan will adequately protect the wetland and the permit is subject to the four standard conditions. Second. Okay. Any comments? I have a good question. I have a question. I noticed on the last one we voted on, there were five standard conditions, it says. That is right. This one says that four standard conditions. That is correct. So that this condition uh, is is with regards to new deeds that are going to be drawn up. If there are wetlands or or buffers or regulated areas on there, we require that that be noted in the deed. So the last the plan you saw was a subdivision. Those are the right. new lots. Okay. Good question. Yeah, yeah very good. Exactly. Very good question. All right. All those toast. in favor. <laughs> Aye. Signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions? All right.
137 Rogers Road. The one we went on the site walk. Yep. Yep. There's a place to say. Oh, I have this close. Oh, look at that. I can tighten in on it too. I think that's, uh, that's probably pretty good. I don't need the rock. Here we go. You want to use a little part of your paper? Yeah. Well, it's a little, it's a little lot. So it's not it's not all that big. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, members of the commission, Norm Tebow, Killing the Engineering Associates. Uh, I'm here uh, representing PSK Realty LLC. Um, as you know, um, uh, Mr. Clower um, came in to get a, a building permit, uh, and uh, he was told at that time, um, Deb looked at the uh, wetlands mapping and uh, told him that there was some wetlands offsite. Uh, he called us, we investigated it. Uh, we had uh, 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 Mr. Ian Cole, who is here this evening as well, uh, come out to the site and uh, flag uh, the wetland uh, limits that uh, were in the regulated area of this particular property. As of it, there's a small corner of the wetlands that, that, that is actually on uh, the subject property. Uh, the rest of it is off uh, the property. As you know, uh, this driveway, uh, was constructed as well as uh, uh, the portion uh, that uh, uh, goes all the way out to uh, Rogers Road. Uh, this is actually Carver Road, uh, which is private. Um, the, the first home was also built uh, by the same builder. Uh, he did obtain a, a, a zoning permit and a building permit to construct. Um, so um, obviously he wasn't aware of, uh, of the wetlands. And uh, I don't know if Deb looked into, you know, um, why it, that wasn't uh, uh, seen previously. Uh, the previous mapping, the record mapping that we had for this property, and it wasn't actually a subdivision. Uh, there was a plan doing a boundary line adjustment. There were, there were three parcels. Uh, and, and what happened was the, the boundary lines were modified uh, to create three building lots. It was my understanding that uh, originally uh, two of the lots were undersized and one of them was very big. So they did a boundary line adjustment. Uh, they, they made three um, uh, buildable lots. And I'm gonna say buildable in quotes because there's a lot of ledge out here and it's uh, uh, it's difficult building at best. Could you go into some more detail about what you just said? Did you have a bigger picture to see? Is this one of the three lots? That this is made? one of the three lots. This the, this one. We have one lot here, one, one lot here, and this is an access to a rear lot. I actually have a Thanks. copy of the- uh, That the, would be um, amazing. Yeah. Oh, excuse me, no. Well, could you just explain for a moment the dark color, the dark green versus the light green? Uh, that's that's what we're showing as the as the the, the dark green of the areas that we're we're um, showing as the limits of clearing. So this will be the clearing limit here, and we're not uh, uh, showing to keep some, uh, some some areas intact and the blues, the blues, the wetlands. I mean, which, which is deceiving. I mean, the wetlands um, is an all standing order, but here is. Here is the the, uh, the plan that showed uh, the development of the of the the, uh, the three lots. Um, actually, I think if we did it yeah. this way, it might be a little a little clearer. So, um, so this is the plan that's been approved by planning. No, there's no no. There were existing lots out there. there they existing. reconfigured the lots. So they re there's no, there's no there's, there's, uh, yeah, they started with three lots, they ended with three lots. So they just adjusted the boundaries. Um, I think this one might be a little bit clearer. One person owned all of them. One person owned all of them. So uh, this is the lot that we're currently uh, yep. discussing here. Uh, this was the lot that was previously um, uh, constructed in the third lot with the access way is this, is this back portion here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And this this is on record in the town, as you can yep. see here.
<laughs> so based upon our, um, our site walk and our discussions, uh, what we've done is uh, show that the, because we originally had the driveway going straight through and then coming back up over here. So um, what we did is, is, is to start turning the driveway as soon as we came over the property line uh, to get it away uh, from uh, out of the regulated area as quickly as possible. I might, I, I'd also like to mention that the drainage area from this property to the wetlands is very small because we have a ridge line that, that goes pretty much over here. So it's maybe about 20% of the lot, if that actually drains back in that direction. Uh, the remainder of the drainage from the lot uh, drains away from the wetlands. So there's not, there's not a significant drainage area that, that goes down there. Now, Deb, I, I believe uh, spoke to the owner uh, and uh, suggested he put some uh, erosion controls at the toe of the slope mm -hmm. of the existing driveway. And I think you suggested a silt fence, which is going to be. No, it right, no, erosion control. Erosion control. Yeah, no, so I yeah, so, expect he's putting hands. Yeah, silt fence is, is, yeah. is, is probably going to be really difficult. And, yeah. uh, and you can't even really get a machine down there. You don't want to put, get a machine down there to, no. to, to um, cut a trench to anchor that in. I would, I would uh, uh, request either uh, a wood chip berm. Or, uh, or, or perhaps uh, silt socks or something of that nature, or, uh, or um, straw uh, waddles, uh, something of that nature that that'll just basically, you know, sit on the ground and, and uh, pulling any of that material back. Absolutely, yeah. But I'm saying put that, put those mechanisms in place before they start pulling things back. At the back. toe of the slope. At the toe of the slope, mm -hmm. correct. He's going to be installing the screen. Actually, just yes. to protect what's going on. Out yeah. There. yeah, he's gonna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think you also saw, though, you know, a lot of the material that is kind of going down that slope. A lot of it is sort of the fractured rock and so forth. It's not really that erosive. Um, uh, and once you get to the, the toe of the slope, it's very flat. I think the the propensity for any kind of uh, erosion into the wetlands is very limited uh, because you do have a lot of vegetation there, and the types of materials that are used on that slope are not erosive in nature. Either there aren't a lot of fines in them. So um, by putting in uh, the erosion control mechanisms at the toe of the slope and, and pulling that slope back um, and, and creating a, a more um, gentle slope uh, you know, to, to, the, uh, to the toe of the slope, I, I think would, uh, would work wonders. I also- um, I just stop you there, but so that would be so, as we mentioned in the field, you know, so this would seem like it was relatively new work that had been done out there based on the vegetation. Again, yeah, my I, limited I, experience. I think um, he hasn't done anything since um, he was informed that there were wetlands out here. But you know that, that material, obviously, it was all fractured rock and so forth. So nothing really grows in that. So I guess my, my point is, is that I would like to see what we're talking about happen sooner rather than later. Oh, absolutely. Like, oh, really soon. Because I think, you know, De as Deb said, he, he, would, he would be putting in the erosion controls. Like immediately, like this week. Point that back. After yeah. that. Yeah. You know, as an alternative, of course, is you, since you have so much rock there, this mm -hmm. would, be, would be to build a large stacked rock wall instead of, or, or a rock slope. Yeah. A, a stacked rock wall um, typically isn't very stable. Um, uh, one of the stabilization measures that um, the, the Connecticut uh, DEP erosion control guidelines suggest are. Are you know riprap or rocked slopes because uh, you you've got that angular stone that interlocks um, it holds in place very well and uh, you know obviously something like that though wouldn't be vegetated you could uh, well that's you, why I feel like we need a plan here I, that's what, that's what I'm trying to say I don't I don't want it to be just sort of this oh yeah just pull it back and do this I think we need to have no, a, well I, I do call I do call out for a seed mix to go on that slope so the intention is to pull that stone back because I know you know you just said well, perhaps you could do a stacked stone wall, which I don't think it's appropriate if you have if you have blast rock, which he's got out there. There, yeah. there, there are shards of rock. Um, I would, my recommendation, and I do, like I said, I do have a seed mix uh, recommended on sheet two of the plans, would be to pull that slope back. I said the existing uh, gravel drive uh, to be removed and slopes regraded to uh, two horizontal to one vertical max. So this is the existing drive. Mm -hmm. This is what we're, we're showing uh, as, as the improvement to get it away from the wetlands a lot quicker. And then I said uh, seed with New England erosion control restoration mix, 
uh, for dry sites and see the specification on sheet two. Which I have right here. Um, and basically it's a, um, it's a mixture of wild rye, uh, red fescue, annual rye grasses, a little blue stem switch grasses, things of that nature that come up very quickly and they can tolerate dry conditions, which is what we're going to have out here. Oh, I'm just still trying to get to the, the, the point that it would almost, you know, be need to happen before you could apply for a permit, really, in my, you know, again, I, I don't want to be mean. Or no, no, no. I, and I, I you know, and I, I agree with you. I, you know, I think, really needs to I think, I think that that's certainly an incentive for him to do it quickly okay. because he, he wants to get the building permit. Mm. So uh, the more quickly this gets done, uh, the, the quicker he can get his building permit and he can move on. So. Uh, I do believe that that is, uh, uh, you know, an incentive, and if that that's something you wanted, if you were to consider approving uh, it and making that a condition, uh, we take no issue with that. You, you understand? What oh yeah, no, I definitely. Understand. I don't necessarily want to give them a wetlands permit. No, without them having already done this. We can, but, can we can but, condition but, it, but that activity is within the regulated area, of course. So, <laughs> so you need, you need the permit to do it. We can't do this work without a wetlands permit. Right. So and we can condition it so that he can't get a building permit until it's True. done. Yeah. Yes, that's right. That works exactly. Well, and when we have cease and desist, they don't have wetlands permit. Just saying. Mm -hmm. No, that's right. No, you have the ability to order them to do something. That's right. right. I mean, exactly. I'm just just saying. That's you know, exactly right. and, and so, uh, you know, and this, I just want to make sure it happens. And, and there was there was no notice of violation issued or a cease and desist. Yeah. But when he was informed, he Absolutely. he I just hired. Want to make he sure hired. You know, Mr. Cole, and he hired us immediately to address it. So, so if he, we can he, condition the building permit based on Deb's approval of. The work that's been done, yeah. I'm, I'm cool with that. So let's now we can keep going. Sorry, See, we're particularly <laughs> concerned about this because there's an obvious vernal pool, yeah, off site here. Yeah. And I think Mr. Cole can probably speak to that, uh, as far as uh, the, the, the habitat and the and the, the functionality of these wetlands that kind of surround. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it's a massive area, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, and perhaps Ian, you'd want to say a couple of things about that just to. Yeah, sure. Uh, for the record, Ian Cole, professional soil scientist, professional wetland scientist at Middletown, Connecticut. Uh, I delineated the wetlands. I got a call from the property owner uh, in the middle of June, I think June 17th, uh, basically come out and say, hey, you know, I'm trying to apply for a driveway permit. I have wetlands offsite on state owned lands. I think this is in the uh, Indlewood Hill. Uh, it's it's that big piece of fact goes all the way over to um, so basically 117. Yeah, it's, yeah, all kind of, yeah. it's, all gravel. it's really cool property to go through there. Um, so, you know, there's a big wetland complex here. So, you know, you get those giant forests of wetland complexes. Um, you, get, you run the gamut of having cryptic vernal pools in there, classic vernal pools. I mean, so it, it's, it's a prolonged, seasonally flooded, you know, forest of wetland. And that thing's been forested for 200 years. I mean, it's by the hurricane of 38. It's been, it's a mature forest. And this, this area between the development and the driveway crop here this is basically a ledge outcropping kind of vein. There's basically this big ledge that kind of encircles the wetlands here. Um, and I went back and I looked at uh, old aerial photos. And when I walked off property down here, there's some old construction trailers yeah. kind of buried in the woods. And you know they've been in there for 30, 40 years, and you know they got to get them in there some way. So I went back on the area, and you can see, you know, when these properties were, you know, more kind of active gravel operations and whatnot, this was kind of a cut through, and they they had a road through here. So this area through here has been kind of opened up previously and is reclaimed. If you kind of kicked over some of the the material that he placed that green, you'd kind of see some of the old buildings and stuff underfoot. Um, so I don't think any of the activities, especially, I do think you should peel this slope. Uh, if we go out there right now, there's like, it's like a four foot cut that yeah. cuts off yeah. real quick. Yeah. So it's at that angle of the post. I think that material's probably been sitting there for about two months and it has moved one bit. So well, you know, to Norm, yeah, to Norm's point, you know, we've had some storms, you know, the, the material inherently isn't very, um, you know, it's not gonna move relatively quickly if it, when water hits it and whatnot, but still it's, it's an easy fix, right? Peel this back. 
get that angle of repose, you know, back to a more manageable, you know, one to one slope or two to one slope or whatever it is. And then, you know, and then, and then vegetate it again. And the warm season mix here is good because this, this hillside gets a lot of sun. So it's very dry right here. Um, and in terms of habitat and whatnot, you know, this is big, dense growth of uh, mountain wall here. I mean, that, that stuff's going to provide a, a pretty thick armor. And, and plus, they can't go down there. You know, this is no, deep, this is deep on lands, and they and they manage their lands, and they walk their lands, and they will certainly give the property owner. Um, well, I know somebody who walked down there that day, so yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. the property owner will fix anything on their on to their satisfaction if you cross that line in a meaningful way, and uh, the property owner has been well versed on that. So, um, so yeah, I, I think the, I think the fix here is appropriate. If, if you look at actually, if you look at this original plan uh, that was prepared too, they do have this this gravel drive that we talk of, that you can actually see the uh, the contours and how they. Well, they kind of conform to this, but and as you saw, it does go off site and yeah. continues on. Yeah, as we saw in the field, it sort of veered in. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 yeah. Did. it did. It did. And, and, and not to downplay any activity that occurred, but you know, to, to Norm's point, as we said before, you know, again, the small watershed area, right? You're at that ridge line or whatever. So thankfully, you know, the the fixes here, you got everything going for you, right? It's 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 a low risk area, so it should be easy to fix. I guess is, is a long way of saying that. Um, but, yeah. record, can you just put the 50 foot and the 100 foot? Can you draw a little line with your finger for me from the wet one? Here's the 50, here's the 100 right here. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, thank you. So the, the, 50, the 50 foot's going to be something kind of mid the midway point here. So, you know, just a little bit. It's hard to know the scale of these. Yeah. Yeah. Deb highlighted this one. Deb, you rock. So here's here's the 100. Here, I don't I don't have the 50, mm, but, but this is the 100. Mm. So um, almost almost on that ridge line that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. yeah, it basically follows the contour of the grain right there. Mm -hmm. Probably purposely so because what I'm said it's all when you've been up there, right? It's, it's a lot of rock. A lot of rock. And in fact, we have um, even back here a lot of these 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 first four test holes that that basically came with the lot. Um, they 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 weren't very good. They were they were they were um there was a lot of ledge there. Um, I'm not really sure how they even passed originally. So we went back down. We 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 excavated some additional test holes down in this area, uh, did some additional perk tests and found uh, much more suitable uh, soils for a septic system. Yeah, even with that, we're calling for a low profile tank here, so he doesn't have to go deeply. Yeah, the ledge great. the ledge drops off basically where your tank is here. You run out there, and so this is kind of the limits where all the rocks broken up. And if you kind of peered off over that way, you see the landscape kind of flattens out. And so you go from that bedrock dives back oh, into, yeah. you know. And actually down down in this area too, the soils were, were really nice uh, for, for septic systems. We had really nice perk rates, um, you know, and any he, and he got down close to eight feet deep with the perk, with the uh, uh, test holes over there. So do you, are you going to have to do any more blasting back there? Oh, you'll have to. Yeah, he'll have to to put the foundation in because, I mean, the, probably, so probably, the best, the pro trailer. probably the best. Probably the best. Well, he'll probably lose it on site. New purpose. He's got. He's got. He's got a big flat. The game backyard. Yeah, yeah, he's got a big flat area back here. Uh, I'm sure he'll be able to utilize it on site. Question on uh, that slope you're pulling back. Um, yep. Unless he owns property somewhere else, else he wants to fill it in. So we talked about riprap, but you also mentioned a planted slope. So yeah, we, I said well that was that was one of the options, but. What I would suggest is is pulling that back, um, and and then just top dressing it and putting and putting the seed on it. That that would be I think a, a more preferable solution. Yeah, I would agree. I would I would defer to having more of a soft scape in that in that yeah, area than uh, introducing really more rock. The, the, the rip ramp going down the slope. No, the whole thing we could. The whole thing. Yeah, the whole thing because we're going to be pulling that slope back right now. You've got oh, you've got true. that. It's you not going to be a very big slope. slope. You're going to got it. It's yeah. going to be like a ten fold long slope that's yeah. going to be remanaged, re so to right. speak. Right. Yeah. Right. When do you in this process? When do you dig for a well? Well, he can't. Uh, typically, not until he gets. Um, he has to apply for. Uh, his uh, septic installation permit, which which comes with the with the uh, the uh, permit to drill for the well, and then he can apply for his building permit. We do have 
uh, approval from the health department, but it's a it's a two step process. You you go and you get the approval. They make sure that the the system will function properly, meets the health code requirements. Uh, then the installer goes in and actually uh, obtains the permit to construct. And at that point, after they get that, then they can get the building permit. Well, or is, I say after he fixes the slope, then. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to point out one other thing. Um, there is a third lot as, as you I know. Okay. All right. And, and this is the access to that lot, mm -hmm. um, and which will need a driveway. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there is regulated area, not much, but there's some here. Mm -hmm. Are you comfortable with including that in this permit? The construction here to get back here. What did you put? What are the, the footage to the edge of the wetland? It's well, it's about uh, for, from the edge of the existing drive to the wetland. You've got about about forty feet. Yeah, and that means you've got serious drop off. Yeah. But I don't think he uh, put all that fill right there, did he? It was past that. Oh, oh no, the fill that we that you all were talking yeah, about is yeah, in here. But but this is the yeah, yeah. regulated area, and yeah. he's going to have to do work in here to get back here. Yeah, I'm comfortable with that. I don't have a problem with it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Is there wetland in the back there? No, no. Oh, no. okay. No, it's just on this side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One on this side's huge. Yeah, yeah. As, as as Ian says, it does. It just it's 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 expansive. It, it, it does sort of like wrap around uh, yeah. this whole thing, go all the way out to one seventeen. Yeah, I mean those those deep properties and those old telecom properties. I mean collectively and whatever the Groton owns over. I mean that's got to be. Thousand plus acres easily. That block of forest. Oh my! It's sizable. Very nice. It's cool. There's some cool rock outcroppings and stuff up there. Some of those ridge lines. You get on those old Scotch pine. Yeah, this they're really cool landscapes. All right. What are we doing on this one, Doug? Do you have a? I did. I drafted up. I didn't know we were going to go with this. Thank you for your time tonight. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, yeah. so, that, that I suggested there for you. Um, obviously, first erosion controls installed the basic slope before the regrading begins. Plan B lines to show the grading necessary. To relocate the driveway. Um, and then I'm hearing from all of you the unauthorized fill material shall be removed before the issuance of the building permit and the start of construction. Yeah. That all will work. And then when you revise the plan to meet these, mm -hmm. um, include the driveway access to that rear lot. Okay. Yeah. Well, hang on. I'm just because I want to make that don't be okay. stabilized before. The building permit can be okay. unauthorized fill material should be removed before issuance of the building permit and start of construction. Then it could be and could we yep. also say and slope stabilization. Absolutely. <laughs> How do you like this writing? <laughs> what a mess. All right, I'll make a motion to approve Inland Wellton's 22-08 single family dwelling 137 Rogers Road for the construction. Wait, do we need to add the other address? 137 and did you want to put the driveway for the other one? Oh, that's true. Um, which 140, it's 140 that. something. It was on the map. It was on one of the yeah. Oh no, it said zero, I think. Yeah, that was, that was a map. Oh, that's right. That still has it. That's yeah. right. It still has it. Yeah. So it's probably zero. Yeah. It would be zero Rogers Road. So I just don't want to do this wrong, Deb. You know me. Okay. So uh, is it still going to have the same permit number then? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, single family dwelling 137 Rogers Road and zero Rogers Road uh, for the construction of. Two driveways mm -hmm. and slope stabilization in Upland Review area uh, to approve the single family dwelling 137 Rogers Road application for the following reason. There's no loss of wetlands or, or water course associated with this project. There are no future regulated activities made inevitable by this application. This permit is subject to the five standard conditions and the following modification. 
Number one, erosion control shall be installed at the base of the slope before regrading begins. The plan shall be revised to show the grading necessary to relocate the existing gravel driveway for 137 Rogers Road. Number three, um, the unauthorized fill must be removed and the slope stabilized before the issuance of a uh, building permit for uh, 137 Rogers Road. Second. Questions? All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this is the longest meeting we've had. In yeah, years. it's a long time. Yeah, it is. So, uh, you have any old no, business? Late, but really late. No. <laughs> I don't really have anything. Uh, it's been so dry. Yes. Yeah, so, I thought they were all like worried that they were waiting so long. Okay. Hey. We're giving all these back on. What? what, what? No, no, it's just planning. It's the planning and zoning commission. Oh. Generally, I, I have that last night. Generally, it goes off later. Yeah. Do you have any report, Deb? No. All right. A motion to adjourn. I just wanted to say just one thing. I know we didn't have. It's not a public hearing, but on the uh, that drastic drive application. So it's going to be key for me that that back piece is held in a conservation. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I have not. I know. Yeah. I know. Yet, okay. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's going to be another key component yeah. for me. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks as always. Yeah. Motion, motion to adjourn. To adjourn yes. Motion. Me. Second. Second. All right. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Aye.